Welcome back to Learn Piezo episode number 56. I'm going to explain today how you can visually measure the displacement of an ultrasonic transducer using an inexpensive uh, webcam. Either it could be a uh, microscope webcam that you can get inexpensively, or you can actually attach um, uh, camera acquisition uh, methods to a, uh, uh, to a stereo microscope or other types of um, microscopes there to get uh, different types of resolution. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you the uh, the setup. Um, so we're going to have our, our microscope right now. I have it. Uh, I have it hooked on to a, uh, a a ruler. But basically, you're going to measure the distances between the ruler, and that's going to give you the uh, uh, the method there. And then when we get to our microscope, we're going to have when we're going to get to our transducer. We're going to we're going to measure it like that. I'm going to go over quickly how you would calibrate, and then after calibrating, and it depends on the focus, obviously. After and this is all set up on a, on a stage here. After calibrating, you would then be able to uh, take measurements. Um, so let's start the calibration process and how that would all look. Um, okay, so I use a program called Yawcam to see the image. Uh, right now it's, it's blurry. Let's just get it there. So I would take such an image um, and uh, I would you measure the distance between, between one side and the other middle point. Um, and I would then, um, so let's just do print screen uh, and I'll just, I'll just stick that here. I'll just stick it there. Um, then, and since I'm using print screen, it'll be the same resolution every time, which is kind of nice. So if I do draw a line, uh, insert, I'll just do shape actually, just to make it really easy. Shape from this side to about that, that's one millimeter, one millimeter. But how wide is it actually? Um, it is actually 6.22 inches, one milliliter to 6.22 inches in this uh, screen capture method. <laughs> you can you can scale it however you like. You're, you guys are engineers. You know what I'm going to be doing here. Um, so let's take this out of the picture and let's bring our transducer in focus. Keyword in focus. Our tip. So we're going to be the thing. I'll, I'll show. I'll show a, a, an image of what it looks like too. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's a tip. Let's scooch it. Maybe more toward there. So that's a tip. I'm going to turn off the lights on this transducer. Turn off the lights. Okay. It's not quite that exciting. And then see all these little spots that are coming up. Those spots, and this is my phone camera, and let me just give you an idea of what this looks like here. Um, all right. So this is the transducer. Actually, I'll give you another, another view. That's the transducer. That's the camera. And this is my light here that I'm going to be using. Now, this is the light for my camera. OK, that looks good. You guys got it. and that. Uh, and bringing that camera light here creates different. Uh, it's, it's, I'm going to turn. Well, right now that we got the other light. We got the <laughs> my other webcam has light. Everything is lighted lit up, and we are actually ready to measure displacement. Believe it or not. Um, and I will. Yeah, I'll turn on back my cell phone light. Now you can get any other lights you want. Look at all these beautiful spots. Spots is what you want because they're going to create a blur effect when we get into it. So I'm gonna show you what happens, what it looks like. Keep watching, look, look, see the, the difference A, A, B. A, this is no actuation. This is with actuation. I mean, with voltage. Um, and depending on how you can kind of adjust it. Okay, this is, I'm gonna sweep. Okay, that's, see that's, uh, these are the uh, distances that we have here uh, to measure. Uh, now there are a couple of different ways to do this, but uh, to measure these, these distances of these 
uh, of these dots, but I will show you one, one such method today. And if you want to know the voltage and everything, we're using 42 volts, which isn't too much, and 35.4 kilohertz. And we see like we're, we're at resonance kind of um, there. Um, and probably like, yeah, so let's move here. Probably if I use a smaller frequency step, I might be able to get a little bit better. Um, but yeah, this is 35.3 kilohertz and we have, uh, we have displacement. So let's figure out how much we have actually. And I'll leave it on. This is not too much, not, not, not really taxing the transducer itself. So I will just um, paste that there. And there's me too. So I'm actually gonna zoom in all the way and I'm gonna do something I do. And that's, uh, I'll draw a box and I will actually, since the box is kind of a, uh, I will take out the no, I'll do no outline and I will show you about how, and now it's like flicking. Like you can see, if you look at this image, this is going back and forth for this specific um, mode. From dot to dot, because the dots get blurred, the, the, you know, the, it goes up and down, you know, you know, the transistor goes up and down, but it goes so fast that it just looks like, it looks like a two dots. It looks like something like that. We have two dots and we have, we have those coming together. So this is the, dis, this is about the distance that we have here. Now you can do a lot more, there's different ways that you can do this. This is 27 inches or 0.27 inches. Okay, so insert and I'll just put another shape just to say 0.27 inches. Um, and calculator, not calculate between dates. Let's do calculate standard, because it's gonna be very simple. Um, so if we go back to our previous slide, we had one millimeter is 6.22 inches. Um, so we go, and we're measuring in inches. So 6.22, well, that's 100 microns. That's easy. Um, so we divide our, our, our divide, we divide this number by 6.22. So 0.27 divided by 6.22. And this is 40, 43, so we get uh, 0 0.043. 0 0.043. Uh, okay, I want, let's try to duplicate this. or three millimeters. And, and as this actually 43 microns, and I can use this new microns. That's 43 microns we got from this. Um, and this is all tangential. It's all uh, traverse motion. So let's just go back here. And um, I don't know if I can make this other part any smaller. So you just just take a notice of this this frequency part. Oops, let me just do this and move you there. So now it's stuck a little bit. Um, it's fitting the whole screen pretty much kind of thing. So there's, can we just any smaller? We can, good, that's perfect. Um, now I'm going to hop around in frequency and see what we get. So I remember those, those are frequency lower than this. Those are frequency around like 34 kilohertz, right? So I'm reducing the frequency as you can see. Um, I'll go down by hundreds. Are we getting anywhere? It doesn't look like it. Well, you can basically look at the Now we get, see, we get, we have another resonant motor on 35 kilohertz, right there. I think it's 
and then it'd be a little more precise because it's dropping on. That's also a traverse mode there. We're not using much voltage. You get a lot more because it's bending, you get a lot more oscillation. So, okay. And here is that mode that we were just analyzing right now, earlier. That looks like it's going circular at 36. Um, that, yeah, that looks like it's going circular in terms of how those dots are appearing. Let me see if it's like, of adjustment of this helps at all. No, it's not that. It's not. It's not the fault of that. And we did have one at forty, which I will. Uh, if you remember, there's a rose mode at forty kilohertz, and there's that's also a side to side resonant mode. Now, if we go further back on this transducer. We may or may not see as much displacement here. There's going to be less displacement. So less displacement. If it's too small, you'll just get a blur. But if you're actually But here at the tip, you will get. So let me just I'll just show you like you get off way off resonance and just drops like that resonance like so you can kind of. You can measure the distances between the spots and I can I think maybe you can do zoom in here. Oh, I, I did it here so you can zoom in and you can see that there's a clearly a dot there and a dot there and that's how it works. Um, So I will just uh, disable this right now. And I'll open a LabVIEW program that I was working on. Oops. Let me just stop this recording. So what the LabVIEW program does is it, it takes the image, it converts it into black and white, um, then Let's see if we can get a good spot here. And then if you click and you highlight across, you can't see the highlighting, but it's happening. You'll get like a dot image like that. Um, if I want to here, I can actually straighten it out. Um, you can straighten out the image. Like if, as you see here, it's kind of like twisting a little bit. Um, Okay, um, and then in the next page, you would get uh, a peak detection, although it doesn't not really turn out as well as I wanted it to. Uh, but the idea is you can actually get a histogram uh, out of this, and I'll actually continue this in the next uh, in the next video uh, in order to get. Uh, good data out of this. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, today I described. Um, how to measure in this case or basically here or basically how to measure displacement you can use reticles there's also a couple other programs that you can use and i'm going to be going through them uh to uh to allow you to do those measurements uh and very easily all right i'll see you in the next video